Howdy, welcome back, Shalom. Uh, we're doing uh, the video now of March of 1994, the various movies from that uh, year. And uh, just close the window here, let me open it back up. Um, okay, so we were just going over February movies, and that was the Ace Ventura really um, overperformed. Um, had it not been for that, I mean, those movies, you know, Air Up There, Iron Will, uh, House Party 3, uh, <laughs> weren't exactly setting the world on fire. Uh, blank Check, Blue Chips, all kind of underperformed uh, to one extent or another. Uh, so then, continuing with that, we have the expectations of the remake of the Jenna Rollins movie called Angie with Gina Davis, and that one flops. Then Greedy opens at a low number, basically, and continues and doesn't do too well. Um, the Chase, directed by Adam Rifkin, starring Charlie Sheen and Christy Swanson, among others. A uh, really good road picture, but something you'd expect to see more on a uh, late-night uh, movie-type deal uh, uh, made for cable rather than you know a theatrical run. It only makes about $7 million overall. Guarding Tess opens at a certain number, but only legs around to around twenty million. And actually, as a movie, it's got some good stuff to it, but it's uneven. It's uneven. Uh, so that came out, I think, the second weekend of March of nineteen ninety four. Uh, so then you got China Moon. Can't even get into that theaters. Similar to Romeo is bleeding. Uh, this one, you know, performed slightly more because it gets into more theaters. Um, and uh, that's Madeline Stowe. Benicio Del Toro and Ed Harris. Really good cast and underrated thriller of that era. Um, China Moon. Lightning Jack. I can't read my writing. Lightning Jack really underperformed. That's Cuba Gooding Jr. and Paul Hogan. I believe it only makes about $3 million on its opening and and a decent amount of theaters. Um, and then a movie that comes out in limited release right at that time. Um, uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral uh, would supplant Ace Ventura as kind of being the story of the year at this point. On to his higher, of, big of gross. It ends up making, you know, 50, 60 million back then, which, you know, in today's money, that would be like more like one... You know, 120, 130. So, Four Weddings and a Funeral, quite a sizable hit, stays around for a long period of time and perfects that kind of slow mid 90s uh, independent hit uh, box office type deal. Um, so, that kind of starts saying, hey, you know, this year's not all blue chips and iron will. Uh, we got some actual real strength we're dealing with here. Um, I'm just talking about from a box office point of view. From a quality of movie point, standpoint. I'm a huge fan of Iron Will. Um, I'm a huge fan of Blue Chips. I'm a huge fan of many of these movies. I don't like strongly dislike Blink Check. Uh, you know, I, I, I like it, if anything. Um, it's been a while since I've seen the whole thing. I don't, I don't have like a strong aberration of Jack. Um, it's just that these movies didn't perform too well. So then there's Hudsucker Proxy, similarly. Uh, one of the Coen brothers that no one ever really talks about. Uh, Coen brothers movies that no one ever talks about. Paul Newman, Jennifer Jason Lee, I believe Tim Robbins. Um, kind of a zany office comedy. <laughs> Lack of a better uh, term. The Ref, um, which starred Dennis Leary, um, Kevin Spacey, and Judy Davis, among others. Sort of a home abduction comedy, I guess. I never thought that the concept was funny at all, so... Uh, a lot of people do like it. It's more of a Christmas theme out in March, I believe. Uh, I have seen it. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. Then you got a movie that seems like it could have been made in the 80s. And almost, in my mind, I almost think it was. I believe it starred uh, Thor Birch, Monkey Trouble. Um, maybe who has been filmed a year or two before and then delayed and released here. I have a hard time believing that this movie came out when it did. Uh, but, I mean, it... You know, it is what it is. Monkey trouble. And then uh, Naked Gun 33 and a third. I saw this movie in uh, Marina Del Rey. My grandmother and my, my father. Um, 
And, you know, I'd seen the other Naked Gun movies as well. I saw Naked Gun 1 and Naked Gun 2 at the Virginia Dare. And, um, you know, seen them in theaters and was real excited for them. Those were both summer releases. This one come out in a, a relatively soft March. And uh, it opens pretty big, you know. It eats up what kind of had the Ace Ventura market the year, the month before, high 20s. Um, and people don't really like it as much, and I don't know, I saw it, like, straight on through about a year or two ago, and I really enjoyed it. I really felt that its humor kind of held up even better, um, than maybe even made at the time, and that its finale was pretty damn good, um, you know, the finale sequence of the movie, uh, in Naked Gun 33 and a third, and it's very topical. I mean, the movie could almost be used as evidence in a trial, almost. It features O.J. just months before the actual, tri uh, you know, events from his first major trial went, uh, would transpire. Uh, so anyway, so then, um, you know, just fantastic performances all around in the film as well. Uh, really fun. Naked Gun 33 and a third. Um, Above the Rim. Uh, Tupac Shakur, among many others. Um, a good basketball movie. Um, I don't like it as much as the, you know, holy trinity of basketball movies like Hoosiers, White Man Can't Jump, and Blue Chips, but they're kind of interesting that both these basketball movies came out right around the same time, um, in Blue Chips and Above the Rim. This one's about, you know, kind of more of a Rucker Park type deal going on, and a uh, fantastic soundtrack ends up having the song regulate, you know, on it, and, uh, that was, you know, probably the hit of 1994. So the f first half or first third of uh, uh, 1994, we've already become very famous. comedy hit that would set the you know, pop culture, you know, with Jim Carrey. He, what he did with that character became part of pop culture. He got above the rim with the great soundtrack and the song that would become very famous. And a lot of other different trends that we've pointed out here. Uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral, which would be the sleeper hit of the year. Sleeper hit of the 90s, almost. Uh, so very interesting. i um, glad I'm doing this box office report and movie report from uh, March of 1994. And just kind of celebrate quarter poll what we've seen. And uh, we've seen, you know, the Ace Ventura, really big unprecedented success. And the soundtrack movie, uh, Above the Rim, just really throws it down. Another movie that kind of throws it down, only cost about 20 million marketing and making it and everything, was uh, D2. I guess that would be Mighty Ducks 2. Uh, D2. Um, I never, I've never even seen the full Mighty Ducks first movie, so I have not seen Mighty Ducks 2 or obviously D3. Um, but this one did quite well. I mean, look at its numbers. It made about 55 million and um very different kind of movie than the first one which legged its way up to whatever number it got to this one opened and had all the name recognition from now being a famous movie and being a, a full-fledged hockey team at that point because uh, they started playing very soon after the first movie was a hit as the mighty ducks in fact i went to a game february of 1994 uh, that was a mighty ducks game so they built that arena, and they had everything all set up for them. So anyway, those are the movies of March of 1994. Uh, what stands out to you? Uh, Angie, Greedy, uh, uh, you know, the, the movie with Kirk Douglas, Greedy, um, and Michael J. Fox, the Flop, Flop, Chase as well, Guarding Test by an underperforming movie. China Moon, hey, good movie, but underperformed. A lot of underperforming movies, except for Naked Gun 33 and a third. Four Weddings and a Funeral, and uh, I guess you would say Above the Rim and D2, because Above the Rim, I mean, it was successful with its soundtrack and everything like that, and had limited theatrical, I believe, I'll correct that if it's wrong, uh, but may make April 1994 and talk about the summer of 94 uh, real soon. Okay, bye for now. 25 years later, movies and box office revisited. And uh, we'll also be doing some more Q&A videos. I've got Q&A parts 5 through 8 that I'm going to be doing 
and uh, posting within the next week or two. So bye for now.